In this video, we're going to give you a basic insight into the daily routine of a crane operator. The mission statement for a crane operator is to transfer loads safely as required for efficient operations. And this will only be achieved by having well-trained crane operators on the rig. Remember, in this video, we're only going to show you the basics of what you need to know to be a crane operator. You'll get a more detailed look at working with cranes when you watch the other videos in this series. So let's get started. Oh, I'd better introduce Tom here. He's a trainee crane operator. We'll be following his progress throughout this series. One of the first things you must get to know is the chain of command. There will always be someone that you should report to and get your orders from. Make sure you know who to report to. The chain of command that applies to a crane operator on an offshore rig is as follows. The man in charge is the rig superintendent. Next in the chain is the barge marine supervisor, who for our purposes we refer to as your supervisor. Then there's the crane operator, and after him are the roustabouts and the maintenance roustabouts. On land rigs, the chain is slightly different. The rig superintendent is still the man in charge, but the crane operator reports directly to him. The roustabouts and the maintenance roustabouts report to the crane operator. When we refer to the supervisor in this case, then we'll be referring to the rig superintendent. During a lifting operation, it's important to establish proper communications with other crew members taking part in the job. One man must be assigned to give signals to the crane operator. This signalman, or banksman as he's sometimes known, must have a close working relationship with the crane operator. He must be trained to use the correct hand signals, and he must position himself where he can be clearly seen by the crane operator. During a lift, all loads must be controlled by roustabouts using tag lines, but the signalman should not be holding a tag line. His job is to give signals and ensure that other crew members do not put themselves in danger by walking under a suspended load. He should also look out for any hazards not visible to the crane operator and be ready to stop the operation at any time if necessary. There are many types of crane used in the oil industry. We can't show all of them in detail, but here are some of those you might come across. Now let's look at the major components of the crane. The base or pedestal, which is fixed to the structure of the rig, supports the crane and its loads. Above the pedestal, the rest of the crane, which is supported by the slew bearing, is known as the revolving superstructure. On this, there is the cab, the engine house, the gantry, the boom, and the jib. There are two hooks that can be used for lifting the main lifting hook and the whip line hook. The main lifting hook is used for lifting the heavier loads. The line to the main hook is spooled through several rows of shivs to increase its lifting capability. Because of the number of wraps around the shivs, it takes longer to raise and lower the load. So for the lighter loads, depending on the crane's capacity, there's the whip line. Since it isn't spooled through an array of shivs like the main lifting hook, it's quicker in lifting and lowering light loads. At the start of each shift as a crane operator, you must check the crane to ensure that it's in good working condition and ready for use. The daily checklist specifies the checks to be made. Any problems must be noted in the crane logbook and brought to the attention of your supervisor. As well as the daily checks, there are weekly checks to be made. These checks are covered in detail in the video Crane Maintenance. 
Let's take a look into a typical crane operator's cab. The layout of the controls will vary depending on what type of crane you're using. So if there's something you're not sure about, you should always refer to the operator's manual. A copy of the manual is normally kept in the cab. If it's not there, or you have any doubts at all, consult your supervisor. We'll look at how all the controls in the cab work in the video crane operations. On a drilling rig, every member of the crew must work safely at all times. As a crane operator, you have a particularly heavy responsibility. If you operate the crane in an unsafe manner, you may seriously injure other personnel. You may cause damage to equipment, and you may seriously disrupt the operation of the rig. There's a lot to think about, but in time it'll all become part of your routine. Knowing your crane's capabilities is something you'll learn when you first operate a crane. Other things you need to know include the weight of the loads you're lifting. This is something which you'll get from your supervisor or from the jobs manifest. Where your fellow workers are and what other work is going on around you. And the correct hand signals and who's giving them to you. Everything we discuss here will be shown in detail later in this series. Another essential part of your day will be the pre-job meeting. This is where you'll find out everything you need to know about the job in hand. Your supervisor will give you vital information, including the types of loads that will be involved and the conditions you're going to be working in, such as the weather or if there'll be any helicopter activity. You won't just need to know about your job either. It's also important that you know what other work is going on around you. For example, who's been delegated the job of signalman. Remember at the pre-job meetings, always pay attention and also participate. Ask questions to ensure you fully understand the requirements of the job and provide information to your fellow crew members. There's a saying, wash me, grease me, keep me clean, and I will be a good machine. And it's certainly true when it comes to cranes. It's much easier and more pleasant to work with a tidy crane. Spotting any problems will also be easier if the crane is clean, inside and out. Besides this, a well-presented crane demonstrates the professional attitude of the crew and the company. Get into the habit of doing a bit of housekeeping around your crane. It'll be for your benefit. That's you too, Tom. At the end of your shift, you're going to want to get a good rest after all that hard work. But before you go, there's one last thing you'll have to do, and that's the handover. Before you leave your crane, make sure it's safe to do so and that you've spoken to the next operator who's going to use it. Make sure that the crane operator coming on shift knows exactly where you stand with any ongoing job. And don't forget to mention anything discussed at the pre-job meeting that he needs to know about. Tell him about any problems you've had and any maintenance that needs carrying out. You should also note any problems clearly in the crane logbook and report them to your supervisor. By now, you should have some idea of what an important job a crane operator has. But let's just run through those main points again. Know the chain of command. Establish clear communications with others involved in the job. Ensure that the daily and weekly checks are done correctly. If you have any doubts or problems, discuss them with your supervisor. Know your way around your cab and the controls of your particular crane. Always put safety first. Pay attention 
and participate at the pre-job meeting. Become a good housekeeper. I think it's about five o'clock. Make sure you hand over the crane correctly. There's a lot to learn if you want to be a successful crane operator. Take a look at this clip from an earlier training video. Well, that was nearly 20 years ago, and I'm still with Setco Forex, and still involved in crane operations. Over the years, things have changed in all aspects of crane operations, none more so than safety. Being a crane operator is a demanding job with lots of responsibility. If you want to make the grade, you must take your training seriously and think about safety all day and every day. There's the voice of experience. Take your training seriously and make safety a priority. If you watch these video programs carefully, you'll be on your way. For now, goodbye and good luck.